Welcome back. We're going to go out into the field now. George Lorimer is out there in the streets of San Diego doing something amazing, I'm sure, and we're going to find out what that is. Hillcrest is one of the most unique neighborhoods in San Diego. There's always something new popping up, and it is now home to the U.S.'s first fermentary and distillery, whose main ingredient is fruit. I'm excited to check it out. George, one of my favorite parts of being in Hillcrest is I feel like it has its own heartbeat. It's, it's all about community and it always comes up with new concepts and uh, I feel like we're in one of those today. I know. Isn't this amazing? So Alan, tell us about this. Oh my gosh, there's so much that we do here. Um, first and foremost, we make alcohol, which is quite a bit of fun. Uh, we just happen to make it out of a part of nature that no one else makes it out of. Uh, you know, we know about the craft brewing movement. We don't always consider that you know grains are what we're fermenting there. And really, when you get down to the science, it's the sugar in those grains that make into, that get created in the alcohol. Um, and so, when you can look at the rest of nature and you see strawberries and pineapples and honey and all these other sweetened teas that you can ferment to turn into cool craft beverages, you better believe that's why we're doing what we're doing today. Nice. I mean, San Diego is known as the craft beer capital of the world, I right. think. But how did you decide we're going to go with a completely different? concept and build yeah. fruit craft. You know, it was for me the concept was built on the what was the science of fermentation. So, you know, the funny thing is about the history of alcohol. You, we think about like um, maybe sake or beer or, or honey wine being the oldest of all alcohols, but before man was even running around, there was actually spontaneous alcohol being produced by nature from fruit fermenting. And so that happens even today if you want to do a fun YouTube search, it's going to be on drunk animals. <laughs> You'll see them eating the fruit and they're just falling over and all that kind of fun stuff. But that's the same idea. This is a product that nature created for all of animal and mankind to enjoy. And there's $200 billion of consumption in the United States around alcohol and none of the alcohol. I thought alcohol, it'd be higher. <laughs> right? <laughs> and none of it is made from what I consider to be the highest quality of all ingredients. Most of it's made out of corn, potatoes, rice, corn, uh, I said corn, <laughs> grains. Carbs. Carbs, you know, and for me, when the sugars in the strawberry juice are fermented into a strawberry wine, you can make a bone dry strawberry wine that doesn't have the sweetness that we're afraid of and has all this flavor and all this character that we've never nice. experienced in other alcohol experiences. Now, I'm not sure if you knew this, George, but fruit craft is the first of its kind in the whole country, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing that makes us different is most of the time wineries just stick with wine, white. red and white, you know? We do make red and white wine. We also make fruit-based wine, as I mentioned, fermenting strawberries and pineapples. But we also make cider, which is an up-and-coming category. We're really excited about our cider offerings. We make high-alcohol kombucha, which is something that's also trending. That's one of your faves. Yep, right. Yeah, and like people have that perception of being healthy, and of course it's, it's trending all over the place. And then uh, we also make honey wine. So we just ferment anything that we can to make high-quality products and create an experience that people have never had before. Nice. Now, can you get into, this place is obviously employee owned, but it's basically a social value enterprise. Can you expand on what that actually is? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we really wanted to engineer a new model for business, one that uh, had the best outcomes you possibly could have and uh, didn't treat uh, business as a zero sum game. One mm -hmm. person wins, a few people win, and everybody else kind of loses. And so we envisioned a business model that was owned by the community that first was employees, now it's also our members. It's, you know, these are, they get control and they get say over certain things that are really important to them. Employees get to actually vote for who runs the company. They can fire me if wow. I'm not doing a good job, right? But this is so that they and their livelihoods are protected and it's safe. This is their work. This is their 40 hours a week. This is what they count on to pay their bills. They need to have agency to make sure that that's not being subjected to uh, risk. The other thing that makes it interesting is the member ownership piece. I just believe wholeheartedly in supply and demand in the marketplace. And members are the demand piece. Consumers are that demand piece. And so if they are saying, I want a honey wine made with blueberries, that's our job is we'll make that for them. So we've really just cut out the middleman there and we said, we're member owned. You guys tell us what you want us to make. We'll make it for you. Well, I know both you, George, and Alan, you're all about giving back to the community and, and charities, you with your um, giving back to the military. And you also, is it 10% that goes back? Yeah, so that's, you know, the ownership piece has two components. One is decision making, the other is how we use our profits. And so 10% of our profits every single month are actually gonna be um, 
decided on by our members to do it at certain local charities. And it's super awesome because we all care about certain causes, yeah. maybe it's breast cancer, maybe it's Alzheimer's, whatever it is. Our membership can say, hey, these are great charities doing great work, put the emphasis on them, and we can come along and give them our 10% of our profits that month. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And Rady Children's Hospital is one that we support too. They do an amazing job. I've you walk so through and things. see the, those kids and all, they care for three different counties. Oh my gosh, I've yeah, heard so many amazing. great things about Radies. Yeah. And we've donated a lot to them yeah. too with wine donations yeah. and charities. They're stuff. terrific, yeah. yeah. Now, George, getting to your lifeline uh, of real estate, yeah. what are the trends currently going on in the market right yeah, now? Yeah, so what we're seeing right now is, you know, we're in Hillcrest right now. So we're seeing in the metro San Diego area, we're seeing kind of a flattening of pricing. So we'd seen for so many years, about five years, it's been going up, 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 Melissa and Alan. Like you know, you know, houses have been going up about 6% year over year and condos about 8%. And so now we're seeing some flattening. Um, we're down year to date on sales of around 15%. So I don't think anything terrible is gonna happen, but definitely a stabilization and a flattening. So people who have owned for many years, might be a good time to sell the property or sell an investment property if they'd like to cash out on the proceeds. Well, um, I've been looking at all this wine and you've been talking about it. Um, I'd really like to taste some. What about you, George? Sure, sounds good. All right, thank you so <laughs> much good. for talking about your amazing and very progressive and uh, very progressive company. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's been great it's, to talk about it. I, I really appreciate it. You get me talking too much if you hear all it's day. Passion. <laughs> it's passion, it's passion, it's wonderful. A huge thank you to George and Alan for talking about the Hillcrest area and fruit craft. I'm always genuinely inspired by people that care about their community. Cheers to the American dream.